Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris shrugging off concerns about the 2024 election despite lackluster polling for the Biden-Harris ticket. The Biden-Harris ticket is running neck and neck with Donald Trump. Why are you not 30 points ahead? I think the choice is going to be clear. Bill, we're going to win. Let me just tell you that. We're going to win. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but we will win. I have no doubt, but I also have no doubt it's going to be a lot of work. And everyone's going to have to participate. This is a democracy. Fox News contributor and columnist for The Messenger, Joe Concha, joins us now. Joe, good morning to you. Uh, she says she has no doubt. There's got to be some doubt, though, because it's a jump ball right now. Oh, Carly, did, did you hear that question? Why aren't you up 30 points right now? W when did 60 Minutes exactly become MSNBC? Why they're not up 30 points is pretty obvious. Uh, most Democratic voters don't want a Biden-Harris sequel because they get an F-minus on inflation, on gas prices, on crime making people feel more unsafe than they've ever been before, particularly in American cities, on their handling of the border or lack thereof, not too many questions about that, uh, on education or lack thereof, uh, or the fact that the world feels as unstable as it ever has been. So the way 60 Minute couched that as why isn't this great ticket not up 30 points, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get it, because most voters don't want a Biden-Harris uh, two electric boogaloo, but we're probably going to get it anyway, Todd. Yeah. Do you expect the campaign to roll her out a a lot more or is this kind of like a one-off that they're going to do every now and again when they can get somebody like a very very complimentary 60 minutes in order to keep her from the word salads right I, I think every now and again is probably the proper answer uh, Kamala Harris is a drag on a ticket that is already being dragged by an 80-something-year-old president. So once in a while, they'll put her out there, but they'll make sure that she goes to a place where she truly isn't challenged. That used to be the Mike Wallace 60 Minutes. This other version of whatever I'm seeing as far as 60 Minutes is concerned, uh, it gave her what was basically a tee ball if you put a beach ball on the tee. Uh, it, I watched this and just was utterly astounded uh, at the questions uh, that weren't asked of Kamala Harris as far as the performance of this particular ticket. Todd well, from Carly. 60 Minutes to meet the press, uh, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal was asked about previous comments she made laboring, labeling Israel a racist state, and, and she doubled down. Listen to what she said yesterday. There are racists within the Netanyahu government, and there are racist policies that Israel has been carrying out. I think it is important for us to recognize that we need to be able to criticize the policies of the Israeli government and, uh, and not be called anti-Semitic. I, I really believe the conversation is changing in a way that is not helpful. And Joe, there is a real divide in the Democratic Party over Israel. And depending on how the president yeah. plays this, he could lose support with a Jewish vote or the Muslim vote. And of course, a lot of these decisions get made based on politics. I could tell you, Carly, that anecdotally, uh, here in New Jersey, a blue state, there are many Jewish voters that are saying they will not vote for the Biden-Harris ticket as a result of, uh, or at least the Democratic Party in general, uh, as a result of what they're hearing from people like the congresswoman. Uh, Joe Biden has been steadfast as far as his support of Israel, and rightly so. Uh, but to, to call Israel racist uh, after, again, we're not even what? almost two, three weeks since 1,400 people were murdered in their homes, elderly, raped, children beheaded, uh, lit on fire. I mean, I, the fact that these people that are supposed to be lawmakers go on the air and, and, and call Israel racist, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm starting to think that maybe the term is losing its impact because it's used so often by the same people. Uh, it has a boy that cried wolf kind of feeling to it here, uh, except it's the, a congresswoman like we just heard that always cries racist uh, when it comes to everything. So uh, I I'm sorry. To say this after what happened in Israel uh, not too long ago is incredible by our own lawmakers, Carly, Todd. Yeah, and to the point that Lawrence made going into the T's, the Democrats have a, and you just made, Democrats have a real problem on their hands if they can't get the Jewish vote. Mm -hmm. Finally, want to get your thoughts on the yeah. passing of Matthew Perry. Well, here we had somebody who was so beloved, uh, obviously, by his cast members and by many uh, that watched Friends. Let's put it this way, and I'll leave it here, Carly Todd. 
52 million people watched the finale of Friends. Think about what that number is for a moment. It's the fourth most watched show ever in television history, the finale of a show that so many loved, and Matthew Perry was a primary reason for that. So this is this is such a shame. He's only 54 years old. Obviously, he will be missed, and it really is uh, something that, that, that says to uh, his sobriety and, and the battle with it uh, yeah. as far as leaving yeah. uh, this world too soon. That was definitely sad news that broke over the weekend. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.